Hello, this is Jose Luis at Parametric Camp and welcome to a new section in this playlist, this seminar, this course, however you want to call it, Advanced Development in Grasshopper. What I would like to do now is I would like to transition from everything that we have learned in the previous videos, writing C-sharp code inside script components in Grasshopper, and I would like to teach you how to move farther and supersede that model and start developing your own plugins for Grasshopper, still using the C-sharp programming language. But why do we even want to do that? Why not just stick to C-sharp scripting within Grasshopper? Well, as we have discussed in previous videos, there are, you know, like uh, some advantages in terms of performance instead of um, things that can execute fast, faster, etc., etc. But Moreover, if you're actually serious about the idea of creating your own tools or creating uh, blocks of code that have a certain function that can be reused and that can actually be interconnected with other components, then uh, being able to bundle and to package these functional units that you are designing into native plugins that you can share with other people, that you can redistribute, that you can open source, etc. It actually has a lot of advantages in the long, in the long term. Uh, we have seen, for example, how Grasshopper native components are actually bundled and compiled and have their own icons and they have like special functionality. You can mess with the UI, etc., etc. But the idea that you can, instead of just sticking to Grasshopper components, you can bundle your own custom functionality into this idea of plugins, like for example, Machina, which is a plugin that I happen to develop myself, or many other popular plugins like Firefly, Pufferfish, JSON, MetaHopper, like all these other. It has like a lot of advantages because at the end of the day, it's a really interesting computational design exercise because if you think about this, by designing individual functional units that can be combined into more complex operations or what we sometimes call algorithms, right? Uh, designing that and creating your own language of actions or your own application interface for the design of more complex algorithms is actually a super interesting design exercise. It's a great contribution if you're working in a team where you are the one who is developing tools for your team members, or if you want to contribute back to the community and put your code and your tools out there in the wild for other people to use, Grasshopper native components add kind of a really good way of packaging that knowledge and sharing it with the world. It's very typically what is done nowadays as of the recording of this video with Grasshopper, for example. When we go to Food for Rhino, most of what you can find here is as like, for example, Pufferfish, which is one of the most popular um, Grasshopper plugins these days. One Pufferfish is compiled as a set of 330 native components that you can load into your um, Grasshopper and that gives you like all this new functionality, all these new possibilities and arguably by contributing your own plugins to the community, you're basically expanding and you're basically helping other people enhance and expand their tool set of possible contributions that they can do to design themselves. So it's a very, very nice practice. Uh, you can also download from, you can download, you can also share your plugins and distribute them through this thing that is under very heavily under development and getting more popular as of the recording of this video, the package manager. And if you're even more committed to open contributions and to sharing your work with the world, you can even go the route of taking this code and sharing it as a open source so that other people can pick up your contribution, your plugin, and then make corrections, make amendments, increase the functionality, fix bugs, etc., etc. all the stuff that we do in the open source world. And all of this is better and it's more possible when we work with um, projects that are actually compiled plugins for Grasshopper. So what I'm going to do in this block of videos is I'm going to teach you from scratch how to create a template for a Grasshopper plugin, how to write code that runs inside of this 
components that we can create and how to translate a lot of the logics that we have seen in the previous C Sharp scripting videos, how those translate to native development. And by the end of this blog, I will also teach you new things or special things that you can do while developing native plugins as opposed to using C Sharp scripting. And maybe, probably, I think, we will wrap up this series with like perhaps more high level ideas or a conversation about what designing a plugin in itself, what designing these individual units, these individual functional units that we can combine into algorithms, what it takes, what considerations we can have when thinking about this design process, anything that means creating your own library of code that you share with others has a lot of interesting design implications about how do we think about other people using our tools, which is very, very interesting. I like the topic a lot myself. So I hope to do a good job in teaching you through this journey. And without further ado, let's dive into the next video um, and start getting our hands blah, 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 start getting our hands dirty into uh, creating native grasshopper plugins. All right. Thank you very much. And if you like what you're seeing so far, maybe like this video, subscribe to the channel, say hi, join Discord, whatever, whatever you feel called to do. All right. See you in the next video. Bye bye.